Hey there, welcome back to the Earwiggle. Today I want to show you how to prepare a cat for having a bath. So <clears throat> before you bathe a cat, you first want to trim their nails. And I already have a video showing how to trim cat nails, so we're going to get past that part. And as you can see, this kitten has longish fur. So there's several things you want to do before you bathe a cat like this, especially longer fur. Because if you just bathe them, um, if they have any like tangles or knots in their fur, the bath will actually make that worse. So the first thing you want to do is uh, just brush them out. This is, whoops, stay here baby. This is a, um, like a wire brush, but it has these little dots on the ends. These are like little knobs, kind of like a regular hairbrush would. And you just want to just kind of go over everything, brush them out. You want to get behind the ears. Those are places where the fur will tangle. Um, and he's got a, a paper collar on, so normally you wouldn't have that on there. Um, you would just be able to brush out their neck. And you want to make sure, if they are wearing a collar, that you take it off and brush under the collar. Because that is one of the places where fur will mat. Um, but we're not going to... We're not going to take that off right now. Okay, so um, another place where fur mats up is under here, under the arms, like in the armpits. So you want to make sure to get that. You want to get down the sides here. Um, anywhere. Hi, baby. You just want to get their whole their whole body, actually. Um, hold on, Tiny. I'm trying to lay him down so you can see. There we go. And here along the chest. Oops. <laughs> and... Uh, he was having fun playing and I stopped him to, to show you guys this, so he's not impressed. Alright, so <clears throat> once I go over them with a brush like this, um, the next thing we can do is brush them out with a slicker type brush. Uh, one like this, one of these wired ones. And what these do is they, they, mm -hmm. um, they help pull out any loose hairs. And this will help with a couple different things during the bath. It'll help the cat. Um, it'll make it easier to wash them if there's less, you know, loose fur. So that, that you're basically, you're not washing fur that is loose and is going to fall out anyway. So you're not, you know, it just helps get the cats a little bit cleaner. It also helps them dry off better after the bath because then that way, um, you know, you're not drying fur that's loose and going to fall out. It also prevents matting because that loose fur sometimes will stay in the coat after you bathe them and dry them and then it just kind of mats up. So you want to get all the loose fur out that you can. And while you're using this kind of slicker brush, you will you might snag or feel, feel snags and feel knots in the fur. Um, that's another reason I like using these types of brushes is it helps you find those knots and snags a little bit better. So, here, baby. And you can already see that this coat's looking softer and fluffier already, just from just from being brushed off. All right, baby. Okay. So the next thing is one of these combs. You can see there's like a wide tooth and a fine, like a more narrow, narrow tooth. If this cat was larger and had a thicker, fuller coat, I would say start with this wider side and go through and, you know, comb through. This is going to be for looking for, if you're really looking for mats with this and tangles. But since his coat is a little bit shorter, I mean, he's small, uh, we could start with this side and uh, just comb it out. And I'm just looking for, you know, any kind of mats or anything. These will definitely catch any mats, any tangles. And you want to get their tail also. You want to get their whole body. You want to bite that? Another thing, I usually let the cats sniff the tools I'm using. So that they can see that this is not something that's going to hurt them. See? They let the, I let them sniff it. Then they understand what it is that you're using. And they fight you a little bit less. Uh, this guy is just all wound up because, like I said, he was playing. And I picked him up. So he's... Uh, I usually wait till they're a little bit calmer. But... I wanted to get this video done in time for you guys. Okay. All right. Just a second, baby. And then, like I said, normally you would take the collar off and get underneath that collar. All right. 
So he's got, he doesn't have any mats, he doesn't have any tingles. Uh, one of the things with, especially with long hair cats that you want to check for is the back, the back end. So under their tail, I'm going to see if he'll let me show you. Come here, baby. Sometimes with uh, long haired cats, when they use the litter box, their stool will come out and stick to fur. And you need to make sure that you comb this out really well because even if there isn't any, you know, deposits hanging on there, um, the fur, it, there may have been, and then the fur might have become tangled, even if, you know, oh, you, you hear her? Just a second. You know, even if the, um, the fur doesn't look tangled at baby. So you want to definitely comb that area out. So here we go. You are fluffy. Say hi. So this is a very sweet kitty cat. We're going to let him go and run. And um, after you brush them out, these slicker brushes, they come clean really good with one of these combs. You can just use that to get the fur out. And the other thing I wanted to show you, if the cat had any major, major knots, um, any kind of um, bad tangles in the fur, if you can't brush them out easily, because you don't want to irritate their skin by overbrushing, um, you don't want to cut them out with the scissors because you risk cutting the cat's fur, but you can use one of these. These are like an envelope, a letter opener. There's a blade in here. And what you would do is you would slide this like through the fur under the knot up against the skin. So this would be the cat's skin here. You'd slide it up like this and then the knot would get caught in this blade and it would cut through that knot, that, that knot of fur and slice it for you so you can brush it out more easily. And usually a couple of passes with this will break up the knot enough for you to brush it out so you don't have to shave down the cat's fur. And this is a pretty safe method to use. Just make sure that the knot, like when you're going through, if the knot is close to the skin, that you're watching that the skin doesn't get pulled into the blade also. Usually if you catch the knots in time, that won't be the case. I'm going to show you an example. This is the mama that was howling earlier. So the way this would be used is you would just, oh, you want to smell that? Yeah. You would just put it up against the skin like this and run it through the fur. Come here, baby. Just run it through the fur like this. And if there's a knot, you know, it would, it would go through the knot. So that's how that's used. Um, it won't hurt the cats typically, like I said, as long as you're very careful. And it's safer than using scissors or like a knife or something like that. This is the, since the blade is protected here, it's a lot less likely, likely that you will hurt the cat. So those are some ideas. You do not want to let um, mats and tangles stay on the cat's skin for various reasons. You know, they're painful. Um, they can hide, there's th things that can hide in the mats. You know, there could be things irritating the skin. A lot of times mats get tighter and tighter and tighter and they pull and the cat is in pain all the time. It can cause skin problems. And uh, when you bathe the cat, if there's some reason you need to give the cat a bath, if they have tangles and knots in their fur, it's going to make the knots tighter and worse, and they'll actually make the, the knots harder to brush out. So you want to do all that before the bath. So once the cat has had its nails trimmed and it's been brushed out and you've taken care of, like if you find any issues, you know, make sure those are all taken care of. Um, then when you bathe the cat, it's going to make the whole process easier. The cat won't be in pain. Um, the shampoo will do a better job. It'll be able to get down to the skin. It'll be able to get through all the fur because that's another thing, those knots, you can't usually get the shampoo and stuff into the knot because it's, it's a tangle. Um, so those are two very important things. And, uh, also when you go to wash the cat, it's going to, you know, you're going to, it just, it's just going to wash easier because there's less loose, you know, fur in there. Um, and then when you uh, dry the cats, they're going to dry quicker because they don't have a lot of loose hair in there. They don't have a lot of tangles. And even for short-haired cats, I would still recommend brushing them out before you bathe them just to get out that loose fur. And, you know, and a lot of times brushing out your cat, you'll discover problems. If they have a skin problem, you'll see it. So if you're brushing your cat out regularly, uh, whether or not they have long fur, it's a good idea. Just because you'll discover things that you wouldn't otherwise normally see. So I hope this video was helpful to you. If you enjoyed it, please consider giving us a like and subscribe. It really helps us out. And we will be posting more cute cat videos pretty soon. So I'll see you guys all soon. Have a great day.